this is IBM Museum. I decided to, to actually do a video on the backup battery replacement for the L40SX uh, just because there's one aspect that uh, I find uh, a little bit troubling in a way with some of the L40SXs and another aspect of a discovery made with the um, uh, about that backup battery just maybe as a, a little bit of a, a source or a little bit of a showing what the the battery actually is and also there's not a real good guide that I've seen on uh, or at least Lewis Olin doesn't really have he has some text down but he doesn't have the aspect of um, uh, pictures or anything like that to show how to get an L40SX opened up to get the locations for um, where that backup battery and other components are. And of course I did link the teardown that EEV blog did on his L40SX that shows a lot of the, the internal components and I may go through for this video and do uh, some pictures that I append in there for for the L40 uh, in those close-up views of some of the connections as a good view as well. And the aspect here, and I realize kind of the reverse camera angle, we're going to have an... Um, I'm, I'm going directly to my digital camera and using the microphone on it. There may be uh, some ambient noise that's picked up with that process as well. That'll be a little bit of the, the warts perhaps in this video. Um, and I've not gone through and muted my uh, my cell phone and, and pulled the batteries out of the cordless phone. Let's go ahead and do that as well just so I should have normally prepped for the video a little bit more. Batteries out of the cordless phone. And okay. So I think we're we're set to go here. And this is the what would be regarded as the front of the unit here to lift up this the screen. I do have the, the screws detached already for the process opening just to um I've already wasted a lot of time in this introduction, but this will save us a little bit of time as we get rolling on this. So this is the underside and the front um, that would be that forward edge under the keyboard. And there's these little plastic clips that are in there over covers in these areas. And there's, there's three of them there. And underneath it, uh, has a screw, Phillips head screw, of course, a little tiny screw, and all these screws um, to open the the case are are all the same, and it's handy to have um, both a, a slide screwdriver uh, with the Phillips tip as well. Uh, this combo model works real good. In this case, you don't really have to go in too much depth uh, here. I mean that even a half inch on that Phillips head side is, is good for getting at these screws. There, there's just not any depth to that. And then you'll use uh, the slotted side as a little bit of a wedge in some instances as well. So we've pulled out those. Now, normally as we go through and go to open the unit, and that's by the, the, the buttons on either side, since we have this keyboard section loose, when we go to raise that, or, or if, we, if we brought that out, it's going to lift that keyboard area, and you can use a little bit of that as a, as a, way, as a method to get the keyboard tray out of the, of the unit, but um, don't raise it you know, too fast or expecting the, to bring the lid off that... Um, just because it's you know it's it's got that keyboard assembly 
attached with it uh, with us having the screws out. Now in this case, and, and of course it goes without saying, I don't have anything in there for power on the unit right now. And I've gone through and I had the battery pulled anyway. Um, I've got a little bit of corrosion in my bay and I'll have to go through and clean this out. That was that where that nasty battery uh, was that those Nikehead packs that went through and just was a, a corrosive mess and it cracked the battery and other things. And I'll, I'll probably show that a little bit later as we get through um, on that aspect. Now I do have the, the three screws out already. So you bring these doors down by the little latches. They have a, they have a spring assembly in here and you, you do want to be gentle I mean the, the especially like I say with the the little plastic covers and and these doors they can go through and uh, be damaged with with hard handling of course now the screws that you're interested in the back are here here and here and I already have those pulled out here as well, down on my cardboard. And those are the same sorts of screws as, as are in there for that, that keyboard side. Now, and of course, um, those doors will, will, will drop down anyway when we pull out this back piece. But we're going to go through and we're going to pull the just like we we're bringing the screen up and we just want to bring it up just a, a an inch or so and we have all the spring uh, assemblies for how it retains those latches of the display and like I say all we're doing there is we have it to where it has brought up that that forward edge of the keyboard it's is um it's inset underneath the the back panel here so it's it's held captive there but we can just simply pull it out and normally the the keyboard under the keyboard area and depending on how to to move it around and a lot of times you would go forward to get at like the the sim slots and things like that and uh, you know I'm not choosing to loosen these connections um, especially for just a trivial thing like the uh, replacing the backup battery you know why go through and disconnect something that you don't have to but these kind of flap around there's not an easy way like the convertible had just to basically latch the uh, the keyboard or have it it out like this but um and I'll, I'll probably go through and i'll pull these sims out later just to show one aspect the the troubling aspect that i was talking about now on the back here since we have these screws loosened on that those back pieces we actually pull up on the back and as i say those those doors and of course they're off screen uh for you guys but they, they go through and drop when we, when we pull that up a little bit. Now on this edge, and this is, this is the, the left-hand side of the unit as you use it. Midway in here, there's actually a, a, a slot recess. And this is kind of a critical piece to get up this back um, panel here. And that you go through and you just hear that that click as I've gone through and be gentle again for that assembly I may have to get in a little bit more okay I'm just coming up a little bit more in the back okay and sometimes you can see with that catch here it's loose a lot of time this corner in here sometimes can be a little bit tight as well and the diskette drive is just right below this as well. And so that can just be a little bit tight and you just go forward. It's actually got some clips. And there is 
these connection leads here that that go through for let me get out of creating a shadow on the camera there's these connections here to all the controls and all the the li little displays here to show you the status of the, of the system as well and we're going to take this top tray here since it's fastened up front by these cables and we're just going to set it up here on top of the uh, keyboard and not really have it uh, you want to be careful on how that kind of slides around and we don't want to drop it down and and mess with that connection but underneath here that's kind of gone through and exposed the back area that if it wasn't just as simple of adding or removing SAMs or something else like that and then you would have to have this out because this is where the the modem board goes, it's treated as an option, but it's on so many L40SXs. And then there's the the two RJ11 jacks are, are here uh, for the line and, and phone connection of that. And then there's a less common serial port board that goes in here as well. And it has that DB9 connection over here on the side. And on the back there is a um there's there's not really any serial port it's nice that there is that that parallel port on back we'll get looking at underneath those doors if you didn't see when they uh drop down just to, as a uh, where the connections are there and that parallel port does work for that uh post reader the the startup codes that are put out to this that little board uh, we can plug that into the back of the parallel port as the L40 boots up just it, it runs to the codes and I did have that connected in an earlier time when I was going through now the the main battery that we have pulled out that would slide down the center here just like a lot of the convertible setup and as we saw in EV blogs Teardown, he talked about the NICAD battery, and this is for when you have that main, you, you swap out like one battery pack and, and put in another one. This is just for that temporary time, and that's that actually should charge with normal usage as well. It's a NICAD pack, and just sits in a little tray here. These connections are of these things are down really deep in here and that's what the other side of the slotted screwdriver would be used for to press those back in shape once you have those pulled out and the backup battery is this assembly here as we saw in that close-up of that other uh, video that I ran through the the PS2 utility and I meant to say on on video I think I I kind of munched up the sentence but the the PS2 utility and it's the most involved of of kind of all the notebooks and laptop systems of the of that time frame of the actual PS2 portable systems of the L40SX the um, the N51SX the N51SLC the uh, CL 57 SX and then there were some less common ISA models that were mainly um, I mean they were made in Japan so they they were a little bit more confined or a little bit less common of the N23 and the N33 and I've really not encountered those at all and then there's also um, an N45 and being in being the meaning the notebook models as well and that had actually a 46 sl cpu in it and that's just like a a, a 46 dx except it's a low powered it's a a, a plastic quad flat pack chip on that uh is solder or what would be regarded as a surface mount pin out for that but the, the PS2 utility is more, most commonly associated with 
the uh, the L forty SX, and that did carry over into the once they IBM produced the ThinkPad series as well. Them having that utility and the little uh, I don't know if people have seen that graphic representation, having a little bird uh, that as a as a cursor that moves around as you move the the pointer on the uh, on the screen, but going through insane features on the system like uh, of course time and date, but other. Uh, controlling aspects of that of that utility as well now um, and then this is the hard drive there's the uh, power assembly since the power supply does connect to the back of this I'm not really going to pull out the uh, the floppy drive or the hard drive um, you may have seen that in the teardown video as a, as a better way to kind of show that I'm just mainly focused on this backup battery for now and I'll actually show you the spare planer that I have for an L40SX and like I say that's the troublesome brings up a the troublesome aspect of this um, and clearly as you go through and you replace your backup battery you're going to use the same I mean you're not going to attach anything else other than that uh, connection for the backup battery anyway now you have to move out, this is the, to the LCD screen as it was in the uh, teardown video. And it just goes through to, to be able to put into that, that pivot to get it up into the, um, the screen assembly. And you have to get that ferrite bead that's kind of loose on that cable out of the way because it goes right over the top of where that backup battery connection would be on the board now and this is wrapped in foam and my replacement I, I kind of wanted to show too I went through since it had a plastic covering on the battery before I actually just of course I had to clip that away to get the lead separate from the um, lithium battery and I just went through and wrapped it a lot of it with uh, tape over the electrical leads and everything else like that but this is the battery that was in there. And I went through, it, it has the, um, the fixed leads for that that I clipped away to use to solder to my wires. And what I also noticed as well is that is the same effective battery as on the Model 30 riser that we've seen and here of course is the more conventional source for people that don't have a bunch of model 30 risers around like i do but it's important to note if you get for instance something like is pictured here the that two pin header is different it's bigger than what the l40 needs and of course, you can go through and you can make your own harness out of the old lead and maybe make a little two-pin connector that's insulated, won't short out anything, and makes it easier to connect up that battery up, which is a little bit of a challenge, as I'll show here in a moment. And it's also important to note that if you get the lithium batteries without any solder tabs attached to them, and it's a where those tabs are clipped in on the on the battery when it's manufactured um the manufacturer's not going through and soldering anything um to the to the battery leads and that's an important point here you don't want to use solder to a lithium battery if you get it heated up as you go got to go through and get that solder to bond to that surface you can cause the battery to explode. So this is fair warning that you do any sort of that modification at your own risk. My disclaimer in this video. So let's get back to looking at the case of if you do have, you know, a battery that you can take off, um, something like the Mall 30 riser is the same thing. And I'll, I'll go through and show the ins and outs to that as well and if you do go through to uh, instead of using that commercial so uh, source amazon or elsewhere 
to get your battery you know you have a whole bunch of these small 30 risers around or something like that like I did you want to be concerned with you know the the shelf life for these batteries these risers were assembled more than 30 years ago when the mall 30 came out and lithium batteries they normally have that 10 year shelf life or something around there they age pretty well but you, you know that's an aspect if you don't buy the a battery new now you're using surplus from somewhere you want to be involved in you know and testing the battery making sure it has voltage as i did and i'm sure mine is going to to last very well in this case um, you know i i pulled it off of this riser it has a single lead for the negative side dual lead for the positive side and you want to leave those battery tabs on there you don't want to solder directly to the ends of the of the battery and you know going through on the old harness you pull out you know you want to clip off those those leads so you have a place to solder on that you don't have to strip back those wires or anything like that and if you did buy it from a commercial that commercial source that battery you know you could go through and you could use that connection and have it down there to where it has a two pin header out here at a more convenient area so you don't have to dig back there um to uh to get that disconnected and reconnected we i didn't disconnect this for the for the time frame and i won't have to run through the configuration again but it is kind of positioning it by hand in the in the right area and then pressing down and getting that connector seated and i'll show where that connector what it looks like and everything else close up without this surrounding stuff on the spare planer i have and that brings up the, the troublesome area. And so let's go through and, and get this seal back up, moving that ferrite bead back on the cable to get it out of the way and kind of wrap this label, get this battery seated back down underneath. I'm going to get that. Ferrite bead goes just down, it has to go de kind of down in there. I think there's room here, but and then getting this battery back in here. And I mean, it's it's time to get the unit sealed back up and kind of show the little um, places to that can or little pointers that can can be handy for getting this unit closed back up. And on this back panel, you want to go through and work the, the back in first and get that, get that seated and then come down on the front. And as you gently push on each side there, gain that to click in place. Okay. And of course, we'll put the screws in later. I'll, I'll give a little bit of view of, of the back and... Probably it might be good to do that on the spare planer as well. Let's get the kind of the keyboard a little bit more forward here. I want to go over the troublesome area that I was talking about was that in the spare planer I have. And I, I went through, the, the really interesting thing to me was it's got this temperature sensor or whatever, and it's a two-pin connector that's very close to where that replacement battery connects in as well and I don't know the origins of this planer it even has a section like uh, the the uh, amps for the for the heads of the floppy diskette it's a little bit of uh, it's a little board that IBM puts on some of the PS2 models and they ever they they say in the in the their tech reference if these are, are bent in particular positions that are started in the planner you don't try and bend these back you leave them in the position they are the thought is if you try and push that back and get it out of the way it's it, it stands a chance of possibly breaking something now on this planner this is actually in the way of any um battery that would slide in here so i don't know 
how this planer or who, what source I had for getting it or whatever else. It's just a good visual, visual representation of what the planer looks like. I'll take some high-res photos of this as well, um, just so we go through. And the, the troublesome aspect, as I say, and this was even in this, uh, connected up on this other uh, pin header, and I don't know why. I don't know if, if somebody switched that or whatever, but when I got even looking at this, this pin, the, the connection is actually inverted from how it is on my working system. It's, it's the other way around. And I got looking at it further, and a few of these chips on the, on the planer are actually numbered differently. It has the, uh, there's little areas where there's just slight differences with these little chips, not the main chips, but the, the position of some of the little chips and they're, they're populated in just in little areas. It's di it makes it different from the other working L40s I've seen. And IBM even has this label of a, a particular FRU number. Now, this is even under, we've already put that back cover back in place, but this is even hidden from kind of the rails of the, of the, the battery riser in here. You don't see this label very easily. Now you can see the label here um, behind the SIM a little bit easier. And I mean on, on my working units, they've got, you know, that label in there. And that is a, a different IBM part number than what I have on the, on the spare planer. So it was just, you know, when you're going through and you're, you're talking about connecting up a battery power voltage, lithium, you don't, you know, you don't want to short things, you don't want to, anything else to a lithium battery. And that's three volts or a little bit over with the new battery uh, that's on that connection. And you just can't casually go through and get in the wrong connection and, you know, you're, you're going to damage something. But so that's why I'm saying you don't want to disconnect anything else and it would it's just going to be the occasion to where you just disconnect that replacement battery if you're if that's all you're doing is changing that and you're making sure that that gets you know you can see the the plastic on this this is a, a battery that I've that's dead as well that I've I've got pulled out and I'll probably convert this one at some point just so I have a spare working spare as well but you know you're going to use the same lead that you had on the battery before to, to connect it back in. And so that way you don't get any of that polarity mixed up. You don't get the connections mixed up. So, you know, here as, as we go through, it's, it's time to, to get this thing wrapped up. We've got the, we've got the battery back in place and everything else. Just as a, a brief overview, this is the unit that I have that has, um, two eight megabyte modules. And these are particular Kingston modules that are, that are special to the L40SX. And they, the SIMs, and I also have a, a working L40SX that I'll pull out. And I'll probably show off those on how a particular SIM is modified to work in the L40SX. And there's a little bit of physical changes as, as well in going through in this higher notch that they have. And Peter Went has gone through and suggested, you know, cutting out that notch or whatever else, the plastic notch on the planer. To me, it's going through when you work with the Sims, it's easier just to take a round file um, that's small and, and notch it out a little bit higher. But I really like with, you know, stock components that this unit has the 8 and 8, making the 16 megabytes and the 2 megabyte on the system planer. And so it uses that spare two megabyte um, with the, that expanded memory manager to um, um, still makes effective use of that of that memory um, with these nice modules in there. And even though it's you know really hard to find, that's why I say I can bring up modifying the modules and show how that's done as well. But let's go through. Let's let's get the um, 
the keyboard back in place. It's the same kind of trick here. You want to get it in the back in that notch and then pressing it down. And I'll get all these screws in here later on once I have things closed up as well. And just as kind of a little bit of going out of the video as we go through and close these doors, that goes a little bit far because there's not a battery in there, of course. But we have the connection for the um, mouse, PS2 style mouse. This is the power connector. And the L4SX does not have an external keyboard that it supports, but there's a keypad assembly that goes in line. And it's just like a, a separate numerical keypad area of the keyboard. And I have one of those. I'll show that. I'll show the communications cartridge at a later point because that's a kind of neat little thing that that goes in connected here. There's a, there's a special cable that goes into that. And there was even an aftermarket um, that does like three or so slots as well beyond the communication cartridge it's a rather small assembly has a rather small um, place for the ad adapter the 8-bit adapter and I'll show even I've got some example adapters I can put in that as well so we do have the serial port I was a little bit wrong I was thinking that it was just that add-on whether you had the modem or the the serial port edition there but we've got that that um, default serial port. We've got the parallel port. This works really good for those uh, parallel port connected postcode reader that we can see the codes as the system starts up and may determine where the system is stopping. That works on the L40SX as well. And then we've ha got the VGA connector. We've used that port before on that prior video of going through the PS2 utility and and use an external display. And it goes in blanks, the internal built-in display when, when you do that. And then I th I had to study this as like a reset button or something else. It, I know the the um, spare planner I have has some pinouts for a reset button, but I, I've got a study on that and what that actually is um, for the L40. But certainly that covers quite a few of the ins and outs of the unit um, and there's the diskette drive there's the RJ11 ports for the for the modem and that would be a DB9 if you have that optional serial port instead that goes in that spot but you know that's a that's a good place to, to end the video it dropped the doors down. I guess I'll get the screws um, back in place on there and get this unit all sealed up, get it back into service. And it's nice that I don't have to go through those errors for the uh, about the replacement better anymore. So if you've liked this video, you've liked the content, please click on the, the like button. Please subscribe to my channel. There's varied content. There's times I go back and determine, hey, maybe it's better that I do a, a video on this. And, um, you know, to show more completely than still pictures and a limited location like a Facebook group or something like that. So, but having this on the YouTube channel is, is more of that great content. That's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.